with the patient standing erect, assess the lambdoidosis, inspect them from behind, looking at deformity, muscle wasting, and symmetry. Inspect the patient from the front, looking for any asymmetry, and assessing the muscle bulk. The Trendelenburg test may be assessed as follows. Sitting in front of the patient, hand stabilizing a pelvis. The patient may balance her hands and your forearms. The patient is asked to flex the unaffected right leg and one monitors any lurch of the shoulders or tilting of the pelvis. This is repeated on both sides. A normal patient will be able to hold the pelvis level during this test. Flexion of the hip joint as demonstrated is an incorrect way to do the Trendelenburg test. The test can also be performed from behind, supporting a patient's elbows and asking him to flex each knee in turn as any pelvic tilt is observed. Leg length discrepancies are assessed with the patient flat, one hand identifying the anterior superior spines and the other hand identifying the middle malleolus. Tape measure may be used to measure from the anterior superior spine to the tip of the middle malleolus, comparing both sides. The Gagliatti test is used to determine whether the shortening is below the knee or above the knee. With the medial malleolia symmetrical and opposed, one looks at the height of the knees anteriorly and the height of the knees superiorly. On the knees superiorly, then the leg length discrepancy is in the tibias. If there is a discrepancy in the height of the knees anteriorly, then the leg length difference is in the femurs. If the leg length discrepancy is found to be in the femur, Brian's triangle will help assess whether this is from a polyp above the trochanter or below the trochanter. Placing a finger on the anterior superiolic spine and a thumb on the dracheic trochanter, a vertical plumb line is dropped from the anterior superiolic spine. Where this intersects with a horizontal line from the dracheic trochanter, this would represent the true shortening above the trochanter with no influence of rotation of the femur. If one simply measured the direct distance between the anterior superiolic spine and the trochanter, any rotation of the femur would render this measurement inaccurate. Thus, Brian's triangle is an accurate way to clinically assess whether there is any shortening in the femoral neck or head or acetabulum. Local palpation is performed identifying any inguinal lymph nodes or tenderness. One palpates the bony prominences anteriorly, the pubic symphysis, and posteriorly the sacroiliac joints on both sides, identifying any local tenderness. Hip flexion is assessed, and normal flexion should be up to 120 degrees. Extension should be about 10 degrees past horizontal. Both sides are compared. Placing a leg over the side of the table to stabilize the pelvis. The left hand is used to monitor the movement of the anterior superiolic spines to make sure the pelvis does not move. Abduction should be to 40 degrees and adduction to 30 degrees. The same process is repeated for the opposite side with the left hand monitoring any movement in the pelvis. The leg is abducted to 45 degrees and adducted to 30 degrees. The hip is flexed up to 90 degrees and rotation is assessed. Internal rotation is performed and normal values will be up to 45 degrees. Any pain may present now in the groin, radiates into the knee, and this may be representative of femoral acetabular impingement. External rotation is also performed in the same position and this should be 45 degrees. The same process is now repeated on the other side with 45 degrees of external rotation and 45 degrees of internal rotation. The Thomas test is a test for a fixed flexion deformity of the hip. This is started off with the hips flexed, patient lying flat on the bed, and using the contralateral leg as a lever arm to flatten the pelvis and the lumbolidosis. One that can then extend the leg under examination to its full extent of extension. Any residual lack of extension is now documented 
and this is the fixed flexion deformity. The test is repeated on the contralateral side, the patient holding the hip in full flexion to flatten the lumbar lordosis. The leg under examination is extended and any lack of extension can be measured accurately with a goniometer. With the knee at 90 degrees flexion and the pelvis stabilized, the hip is examined for internal rotation and external rotation. The angle from the vertical is measured as the degree of rotation. This is compared on both sides. With the knee at 90 degrees, the femoral neck antiversion is measured. With rotation of the femur, where the greater trochanter is palpated to be at its most horizontal position from the hip joint, the angle of the tibia from the vertical is measured, and this is the femoral neck antiversion, which is about 20 degrees.